Welcome once again to Product One Technical Web Series. Um, we've made numerous videos in the past that involve assemblies, uh, particularly assemblies with mechanisms. So what we're going to be focusing today is advanced assembly capabilities that are inside Creo Parametric, utilizing more specifically motion skeletons. Now, before we dive into the demonstration itself, it's quite important we describe what are skeletons inside Creo Parametric. So now, skeletons are a powerful tool that can be used to create the 3D layout or framework of an assembly design. Now, skeletons can serve as a common reference for geometry and assembly components, and any edit to that particular skeleton will automatically update all the components that are associated to that particular skeleton. So if you can have a look at this, we've got a simple one cylinder engine assembly with mechanism. And as I stipulated now is that it's quite simple to create a component in isolation, create an assembly and these connections. So what if, however, you want to utilize skeletons and you want to employ what we call a top-down design philosophy. So this is how you would go about it. So what I'm going to do here is just create an assembly. Uh, this assembly, I'm going to give it uh, a couple of units. Uh, let's say this is the unit system that I, I want. So you will agree that what you see there is just an empty assembly. So now, how do you create a skeleton? So let's have a look at this. So I can now select from an array of options, but I'm going to select a skeleton. And I'm also going to specify motion skeleton because that's essentially what I want in here. And of course, I can go about uh, selecting my unit system. And just like before, I'm choosing millimeters. So that's essentially the skeleton, as you can see, is just an empty sub-assembly into this. So now, one of the key things with uh, top-down design is you can utilize skeleton also as a space claim or to segregate areas so that when you're having a, something as big as a ship or an aircraft carrier, you can have multiple engineers or designer contributing to that one assembly whereby everybody's referencing their own skeleton, thus not having clashes or components not uh, fitting. So if I were to take that skeleton and essentially create what we call a simple sketch. So that's essentially all that I'm doing now. I'm going to be creating a sketch. So as you can see that in the context of an assembly, I'm now generating a sketch. So I can uh, specify obviously the parametric values for this and just to get rid of the clutter, let's remove the data planes. So what I'm doing here now, I am literally creating a crank, a piston and a connecting rod as a framework or as a skeleton. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to be applying, obviously, the dimensions that suit my particular design. And just for the crankshaft, this is what I'm aiming to do. So I know very well that this is where I'm going to be connecting, let's say, the connecting rod. And maybe let's specify the piston as well. So this is how my piston will more or less look like. And I can specify the dimensions of my piston. So you start early on to create this, uh, I would call it planning stage. So this is where the piston pin is going to be. So I put it in there. So now for the range of motion, the piston will be going up and down. So I'm going to create a line here that will signal what we call my slider. And last but not least, I'm going to create that connecting rod. So I know very well that the connecting rod 
will need some point of reference. So I'm creating two sketches in there. So what I have here essentially is a sketch. Maybe let's also give some value to, the, to this. Maybe let's make this about day three because we want the, the value of the connecting rod to be consistent. So if I were to modify this, you can see that I'm having a simple sketch that I can modify, make changes, and let's say this is what I have. All right. So why is this important? It's important because now if I have, let's say, a framework like this, it is not moving. So now bear in mind, inside this sub-assembly, there are no components. So now I can start creating what you call bodies that will represent some of those elements. And this is how I do it. So I'm going to say I'm creating a body this time. I'm going to create the first item here, which will be my ground body. So of course you can call uh, your skeleton's names that you will... Uh, remember or that will add value especially when you're doing a large assembly so what I am going to do is I'm going to select that item because that's the item that is not going to move in this sub assembly and now we can start doing some fun stuff so I'm going to start with a crank uh, it's also going to be a body and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the sketches that represent my crank. And that's essentially what I have. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove all the other connections. But if you can see here, I'm having a pin connection. So that means that the crank will be rotating around that particular axis, which is what I want. Now, the other component that is of importance here is obviously the connecting rod. So I'm going to say con rod. So that's what I have. It's also going to be another body. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be selecting those elements to generate my connecting rod. And just like before, I'm going to select the appropriate connections so i will remove the ones that do not add value to this design and i want a rotation around that particular axis so it's going to be a pin connection now let's do the piston itself so if i were to go now and generate let's say the body now to represent the piston let's say this is what I have. Specify it as a body. And just like before, or those previous entities, I'm going to now select geometry that will represent the piston. Now, what I need to do with the piston connection is something like this. So let's remove all the other curves or connections that we don't need. However, in this area here, not only will I be having rotation, but I'll also be having a translation as well. So that means that that connection has to be a cylinder. So what this means is, while you're busy in your planning stage, you can already now designate some form of connection onto your skeleton. Now that is complete, this is essentially what you get. You're having a skeleton that has the same type of connections that you have when you look at this main assembly. And of course, what's left now is to take exactly that particular skeleton, assemble it in a substructure and generate geometry. So for an example, if I were to take that sub-assembly and which is now the skeleton and put it in here. As you can see, there is my skeleton. In fact, what I will do maybe for the purpose of this demonstration to also make this transparent as well. So that means that while at this early stage, I get to see how those components would have ultimately looked like. I'm not gonna dwell too much on the geometry creation for this particular demonstration, However, this is essentially what you would do. Since you've got 
skeletons that represent uh, certain items or certain bodies uh, in this instance, this is what you, you, you can do. So for an example, let's pick the piston. I can take that particular piston, create a brand new component, a copy geometry, or create a skeleton that's also in 3D because a skeleton can also be uh, surfaces or can uh, be lumps of geometry. So if I were to take, let's say, if the normal revolve feature, select, let's say whatever references, and just like that, specify that this is what I'm essentially creating. So what this means is, if I go back to my assembly, and let's get rid of all those data planes. If I were to take now this, this is essentially how you start populating your geometry. And of course you can do your connecting rod, you can do your crankshaft and so forth. And that's how you end up uh, from something like this to something that looks ultimately like that. Now, the power of skeletons and top-down design cannot be understated. This is purely because apart from having a common source of reference, you can leverage this to copy geometry uh, to other, I would call it models as well, or other features, thus eliminating that whole concept of when you're having an assembly, uh, when one guy changes a part, there's an issue with another component. So with this one, you're having your planning framework, which is a skeleton in this instance, driving every component that you have along the, the line. And this enables concurrent engineering, populating a similar design or assembly by having multiple individuals uh, generating these components. And that's essentially it that I wanted to showcase as far as motion skeletons is concerned. For more videos like this, do not forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, like the video, leave comments uh, for us at the bottom. Until next time, goodbye.